this video, I'm going to wire up this 22 kilowatt standby generator from Generac. This is model number 7043. It's paired with a 200 amp automatic transfer switch. This pad that we're using here is made by PowerPad. There's a link in the description. If you're interested, you should definitely check it out. This is the first time I'm actually using this and I really, really like it. Uh, it's lightweight, durable, and I'm totally sold on this, mostly because it's lightweight and it looks nice and it's easy to install. But we wanna make sure that the generator is level. So I originally put the generator there and I realized after I put it down that it wasn't level. So I, 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 I shoveled away some of the dirt and debris that was there and leveled this out with this pea gravel, laid the pad on top of the pea gravel and then brought the generator on top of the pad, making sure of course it's level uh, all, all different ways here. Nice thing about this Generac cart is it actually fits uh, between the uh, pad, which is really, really nice. So you get the generator exactly where you want to put it. When connected to natural gas supply, this generator can produce 19.5 kilowatts. And it comes with this 100 amp main breaker, which protects the feeders for the generator. I've been installing Generac standby generators since 2011 when Hurricane Irene came through and devastated our state. I've been a sales and installation dealer for Generac since 2014. I believe they make a great product. This uh, panel right here is where you find the serial number which you'll need to access a code to enter into the evolution controller at the generator to be able to start the generator. Without that code, you will not be able to start the generator. So that's where you would find the serial number. I believe Generac makes a really good product. However, I do not do the service on the generators. I just do the installation and the wiring. I don't even do the gas piping. So most of my uh, sales are through friends and referrals. Uh, I don't do too many of these a year. I want to say this is maybe my second this year that I've done but I could be wrong. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting out uh, an inch and a quarter opening in the bottom of the transfer switch uh, to attach the wiring going from the generator. And the wiring that you see there is actually a cable assembly that has, that contains the feeders for the generator and all of the control wiring between the transfer switch and the generator itself. This is the transfer switch. And if you'd like to see more on this installation, I've also left a, description for a video I did on installing that transfer switch. So you should definitely check it out. So installing this, gen or getting this generator wired uh, usually takes me three complete days, usually the first day to get it onto the site, the second day to come back and install the transfer switch, and then of course the third day to wire the generator and get the startup if I can get that, if I can coordinate that all at the same day. I might have to come back and it's an additional day to meet with the inspector uh, to make sure that all gets done. So here is this inch and a quarter flexible conduit that I'm using, non-metallic seal tight, I believe they call it in the National Electric Code. And with a cable assembly, a plastic bushing is not required by the code. But we wanna make sure that that lock nut's nice and tight there so that water will not get into the generator. And obviously that pitch going down uh, also helps in getting the water away from the generator once it rains onto that flexible conduit. There's a total of 11 conductors in this cable assembly. There are seven transfer and sensing control wires, and we also have four feeders. We've got two hots of 120 volts each, a grounded neutral conductor, and of course, an equipment grounding conductor. This is a specialty uh, cable I believe they sell it on Generac's website or check with a local electrical supply house. Here's where all the control wires are terminated at the generator. You can see the color coding on the left there of 0, 194, and 23. That's the transfer circuit. And then to the right, you can see the two yellows and a blue and a white. That's your control, that's your voltage sensing and battery charger circuit. 
And here I'm tightening down the feeders. They're a little bit more difficult to maneuver into their terminals. Uh, but I believe it's number one aug aluminum that's here, and that's really not too bad. It's not really too thick. There's a nice close-up look. I try to leave a little bit of extra control conductor there if I can. So this must have been the second day or third day that I was here, and I'm just putting this back together. And, of course, I got to come back after the inspection to put the battery in. So for the time being here, I'm just putting everything back, and I'm going to close this up and start wiring uh, the control circuit at the automatic transfer switch. The pieces of Unistrut, I didn't record them going into the earth, but I actually used my SDS Max with a core bit on it to vibrate it into the earth. And there's literally five feet in the earth uh, because I think I cut off like a two foot piece and I had a shorter piece that I drove in. So that's how I got the Unistrut for the support of the feeder assembly. And of course the gas piping is also gonna be attached to those pieces of Unistrut. Now, I'm not going to lie, This the, the control wiring right here, what we want to do is we want to unplug the module that connects it all so that there's no voltage going through out to where the generator is or here at this uh, control board. Uh, the terminals are very small. The wire is very small, and it's kind of a pain in the neck uh, to, to attach these conductors. But I got it done. Make sure they're in there good. Give it a nice little tug because if you don't have these connected, the generator is not going to transfer. If you're going to do it like this between the transfer switch and the generator above the earth like this, you got to make sure that it's not directly in front of that transfer switch or that meter so that you have the proper working space and clearance in front of that equipment. What I'm installing here is actually a heater for the battery, which really is very pivotal in starting the generator. Without the DC battery here, uh, the whole generator process won't start up. It won't transfer. Nothing will happen. So if you have a bad battery, nothing's going to happen. So that's how important this piece of uh, equipment is. So I always like to include the heater, or at least advise my customer that this is important. This is a good investment. Uh, a heater for the battery. This way that battery sits on there. It's 240 volt circuit. It connects to N1 and N2 right here at the generator. That's 240 volts. And we also go to install an oil heater which heats up around that oil filter so that it stays warm as well. Both of these two, the battery heater and the oil heater are in parallel. There's which means they're the same voltage, so both 240 volts. And again, they connect at the control panel here at the generator to N1 and N2. So when you read the directions on the installation, there's a small section of this generator where a couple of hoses pass through, a wire harness passes through from this control area of the generator where I'm working in, and then to the engine area, which is in the middle. And of course, the exhaust and everything in the generator is on the left side. Uh, but they specifically note to pass these wires through this section and obviously keep it away from any hot parts around that engine. And then there's just two little, there's just a couple of connectors here that connects the heating devices. Definitely highly suggest if you are thinking of installing a generator to get the battery charger and the, uh, I'm sorry, the battery heater and the oil heater, which uh, I think is very, very important. If you have any questions on that, please leave that uh, down in the comments. And of course, the model number and everything is going to be in the description as well of this video.
Take your time and don't rush through this portion of the job. Just be patient and do a nice job here and pay attention to details, all I can say. It's, um, it looks pretty simple and it's easier than it was years ago. The old uh, connection of the feeders and the signal wirings was a little, was a little bit different back then. It was in a tougher spot, but this is a tough spot too. It's not exactly the greatest. I'd like to see some improvement at some point, uh, but take your time here, read the directions, and always read the directions of any new product that you're installing that you haven't read before. Read the directions and understand what you're putting in and follow those directions. The National Electric Code actually requires that you install this per the manufacturer's specifications, so that's important to take your time here and just do it right. This battery is a 26R type. That's the size of the battery. Generac recommends that you have a minimum of 525 cranking amps. Now, I ordered a battery for this generator, and it must not have come with the original shipment. And then just as I was done with this job, my customer says, hey, by the way, they dropped this off. Do you need this? And it was the battery that came with Generac. So I wound up, wound up buying a new gener a new battery and now i got a spare battery for my next generac setup which i'm pretty sure is going to be soon It's always nice to get those approvals and of course you want to put the sticker maybe on the transfer switch there or on the generator I'd like to put it on the transfer switch just in case something happens and we need to make sure that this thing passed inspection which of course it looks professionally done right I hope you think that and so uh, just put those stickers on there but they have all the information down at City Hall where we got the permit from the town has it on record so there's no issue there. The sticker just represents on location that it's been approved. Three zero. Very important here to get the serial number so you get the activation four. code to start the generator. Uh, without getting this zero, code, zero, nine, you six, will not one. be able to start the generator zero, zero, in nine, manual six, mode or auto mode. It just won't start without this code. So pretty important. That's why I showed you where to get the serial number. It also lets Generac know that the generator has been started and it's active and serving. Maintenance on the standby generator is also super important. So I have a friend, Devin, owns A to Z Electric in Cranford, New Jersey. I'll leave a link in the description. And he does the maintenance on all my generator installs in this area. 